Australia is a wonderful place to get to do research, and especially on fire. The plants and animals that are here are found nowhere else, and especially it's such a fire-prone place. As a fire scientist and a fire ecologist, we can ask questions here in Australia, and especially in WA, that um, cannot be answered anywhere else. And so that gives us the opportunity as scientists to contribute both locally, but also to our international knowledge and to really help understand how ecosystems work and respond to fire and climate change better. So a lot of the research we're doing is really focused on how fire affects vegetation and how it affects the vegetation in relation to climate. So what happens when fire occurs right after a drought or during a drought? And what are the longer term dynamics of the plants? So working at Murdoch in a place where we're standing today in this bushland, in this Banksia woodland, uh, is emblematic of what Murdoch enables me or, and our team to do. We're able to get out and do research. We get to interact with a really vibrant um, science community at the university and work with the undergraduate community to you know, bring them into our research and then produce the sort of relevant information that our land managers can use. Some of our work has shown that plants are having a harder time with climate change and they actually require longer fire intervals than they might have otherwise because it takes longer to produce as many seeds to replace themselves. And so working with um, state government like Parks and Wildlife, they, we've worked with them to extend fire intervals in certain places. We have a lot of knowledge and capacity about how we suppress fire, and how we use prescribed burning perhaps, but right now we're in the midst of a point in time where people are using technology like drones, satellite imagery, paired with people on the ground to understand what's happening, almost in real time sometimes when it comes to an actual bushfire incident for suppression. As a scientist, these types of tools are also really relevant to us, and we are unlocking the, those capabilities right now. And in the future, bushfire science will be much more evidence-based than it already is, and it'll be much more landscape scale, and be really able to inform how we go forward and how our management uh, works. We're standing here in the southwest of Western Australia. It's a Mediterranean climate, so we've got these long, hot, dry summers. Uh, we have fires every year. And around the world, places like California, Spain, Portugal, Chile, um, other places have very similar climates. And then other places that are fire prone, like the southeastern United States or the eastern parts of Australia. The types of work and knowledge and evidence that we're creating here are directly relevant to people that live there because they have either the same climate and a lot of fire, or they have um, the plants and animals that have fire adaptations and what we can learn here is relevant. Working here in WA, we're really fortunate. Um, the community of people who make decisions and who use fire and put out fire is relatively small. And it's been really a lucky and fortunate thing to get to cultivate the relationships with the departments in state government, um, local governments, and then to work with them to share the science that we've been um, creating and the knowledge and the evidence and help inform how fire is used and how fire is suppressed and sort of um, collectively balance conservation and biodiversity with um, protection of life and property. It's really important to think about how fast we are changing. And this time that we live in now is acute. So today, for example, we're, living, we're standing in Banksy Woodlands, which is a threatened ecological community because it's been cleared and it's declining. So how we manage fire, how we manage development going forward, this is a time to really seriously think about the decisions we're making and making sure that we have the right evidence on hand to drive those decisions to make sure that places like this are still here. It is really important to consider that there's still hope. We can get out in front of the threats that we're facing. The Black Summer fires were devastating. They burned almost 20% of our temperate eucalypt forest in the continent, and they emitted so many emissions into the atmosphere that it was like a volcano went off. There were that many particulates. But we can get out in front of these issues and try to understand the implications. And that again is why a place like Western Australia is so important, because we actually are out in front and we can offer that knowledge to uh, people around Australia and around the world. Mm -hmm.